It's funny how in business, just when you think you've got a steady pulse on the market, the ground seems to shift beneath your feet. This week, oil prices decided to hop above $70, shaking things up just enough to make us sit up a little straighter. It's not the first time that we've seen this dance, but the tempo feels a little different, doesn't it? For those of you that are new, this is FutureWise Energy, and I'm Mark Roach. I come to you as someone who's independent. I've stood on drilling rigs in the Permian at negotiating tables, you know, from Riyadh to Houston and maybe a few too many economy class flights to count across the globe. But my vantage point is simple. I've seen the symphony that is the global energy market. And trust me, it's got some wild percussion sections. Now, this week's price jump is no standalone. Note that in that symphony, it's an overture rooted in geopolitics. Tension is simmering on multiple fronts. Iran, for starters, has decided to suspend cooperation with the UN nuclear watchdog. Add that to President Trump shortening the deadline for Russia to wrap up its ceasefire talks in the Ukraine. It's a kind of diplomatic tightrope that ensures the phrase geopolitical risk premium continues to, to feature in our vernacular. And sanctions? Everyone loves a good sanction, right? The EU rolled out more measures targeting Russian oil exports, a lower cap here, a ban on Indian refinery there, and suddenly the market starts sweating over supply bottlenecks. Well, that's how the script usually reads. It doesn't even take actual disruptions to drive the price up, just the fear of it. If someone so much as draws a straight line through the Strait of Hormez on a map, everyone starts to scramble. But geopolitics chess aside, there's plenty more brewing in our sector. Now, I spent years in boardrooms where phrases like ESG compliance get tossed around as casually as coffee orders. And although everyone likes to slap ESG-friendly metrics into glossy annual reports, a recent commentary challenges us to rethink that game entirely. The integrated oil and gas players might be better served by ditching some of the ESG KPIs in favor of metrics that directly measure profit and value creation. Now, here's the kicker, though. While the sector is leaning heavier on traditional value metrics like ROCE, we're still juggling the fallout of fiscal excesses across the board. Did you catch the piece on commodity inflation cycles? Historically, every time excess spending meets monetary accommodation, be it to fund wars, pump up social programs, or otherwise devalue a currency, commodity inflation rears its head. It's no coincidence that today's markets feel eerily like cycles of the past. We've been here before, just in a slightly different outfit. Shifting the lens a little bit, there's another player currently joining the fold, the American AI boom. Who would have thought that training chatbots would put such a stress on the energy grid? It's wild to think that data centers now have the ability to move markets, firing up prices simply because they demand increasingly insane amounts of electricity. The future might look like HAL 9000 whispering, I'm sorry, Dave, but somewhere an ExxonMobil engineer is calculating how to power it. Now, I'll leave you with this. Markets will move, headlines will grab attention, and oil prices will continue to act like the star of their own drama. But what's constant is the need for adaptability, whether it's pricing in, in geopolitical turmoil, rethinking compensation models, or simply standing ready for the next curveball innovation like AI. Change demands one thing from all of us, not more wells, but smarter ones. I'm Mark Roach, and this is FutureWise Energy. Stay sharp, folks, and remember, there's no such thing as steady ground in our world. Only people steady enough to stand their ground.